Okay, let's move on with the ever so awesome uh, arches to the wagon. So to start this off, we're going to go to our back view, our front view, I suppose. And let's just create ourselves a nice stick of wood. So I'm going to create a cube. Thin them out by holding um, Holding control and just grabbing that top one. See our perspective view. Now it's just becoming like a skinny pull. Back view. Front view. Sorry. I'm going to do it on this side just to give enough clearance. So there we go. That's probably enough length. Let's go to the uh, channel box and give ourselves some more subdivisions to play with on the height. And here I'm kind of looking once again. I don't want to overdo it, right? If we go too far, it might be too much. But something yeah, there might be pretty good. I know I'm going to bend, I'm going to be bending this over, so I need to have enough uh, resolution. To make that curve really smooth, as smooth as I can. So now that I have my pole, I need to bend it. So the best way to do that is to use the bend deformer. So under our deform tab, we have a nonlinear bend deformer right there. Click on that. And you may be like, well, what happened? A bend handle was created. There it is. If I pull it out, you see, you'll see it better. Um, if I hit number four, you'll see that there is a bend deformer going right down the middle, and that the geometry being affected by it has been given this purple outline. When I go to my bend deformer input and I say curvature and I start to bend, you'll see I have the option to increase the curvature. Now I can take this bend handle and depending on your orientation of your world and of your object, your bend deformer might come in something like this at a weird angle. And then when you do your curvature, it's not going to give you the sort of results you really want, right? Um, and you can see I'm like getting some really odd <laughs> looking stuff. So lucky for me, this bend deformer came in perfectly, but just be aware that sometimes you will have to go in and take that bend deformer and just rotate it, you know, 90 degrees that one way and 90 degrees another way to get it orientated the way you want it to bend. Sometimes I'll just put a little curvature in it and then I'll just rotate that deformer until I get it how I want it. So from my front view, I can look at my deformer. Let's just increase the curvature until I get about where I want. And already I'm kind of say, seeing uh, a problem. And that is, it's not, it needs to reach all the way out to here. That's not far enough. So to uh, To uh, make some adjustments, we'll take the actual bend handle and we'll just move it up a little bit. I can scale the bend handle to make it larger, get a, a radius. I can move it over. Oh, that's not going to be too good. If I grab the cube and the bend handle at the same time, I can move them and transform them together. I can also take this cube handle, as long as I keep my move on my object setting, I can just move it up and it actually slides along the, uh, the curve, which is quite nice. Also on the bend deformer, you notice there's a kind of a midpoint and then a top and a bottom. That's controlled here by the high and low bound. So the high bound is going to be 
everything on top like that. The low bound is going to be everything on the bottom. So I can actually just decrease the low bound until I just get just as much as I want there. So like maybe negative 0.8, sorry, negative 0.08. There we go, see that the exit angle and then it just kind of stays there. So once you get you know pretty darn close to what you're what you're after, um, you want to delete the history on the cube. So edit delete by type history. And now the, the bend deformer disappears. So you can see this is what we're left with. Let's go ahead and look at this from the right view. On the side if we might want to scale it a little bit that way. And you know, kind of bring it in line. So one thing I'm noticing is I want to be able to taper this and get it thinner. So I'm just going to do that with a right click. Grab my vertices, grab the end, turn on my soft selection, and I can scale both horizontally and vertically. Go ahead and go out a little further even. Get some more. Maybe can grab towards out here. Scale those verts. Nice. Okay. Hit the feet. Back in off mode and take a look at this. Flattening some of those out some more. Looking pretty good. So the next thing I might want to do is uh, duplicate this and bring it on over to the other side. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll hit Command D to duplicate and rotate it 180 degrees and slide it on back. Let's take a look at our right back view again. And let's try to line it up with our pieces. big scaling and then I think what you'll see is well, I have way more than I need so I'm just going to go faces select the faces I don't want hit delete come back in double click to grab, the, grab that edge loop and we'll do mesh fill hole there we go Mesh fill hole. From here, I can now turn on my soft selection and start to do some thinning. Let's go to my right view, my back front view, sorry. You can see there's a little bit of
let's grab some of these guys and we can do some soft selecting and start to bring them out a little bit. Once again, this model imperfection is a little bit your friend because that gives it the charm and unique quality of a old world, not perfectly crafted uh, hand cart or pull cart. Try to line up these edge loops so that they kind of line, you know, line up one piece of uh, geometry lines up with the other. That will facilitate for a good seam. So this, the seams between the two will line up nicely. And there's that piece. Grab here, turn on soft select, and just go for a little hit D to change the pivot, and then I can scale out. So I was struggling with. A bug I have in Maya right now where when I'm resetting a pivot, so I hit D, right? So when I rotate, I can rotate fine, but when I hit D, it's snapping on its rotations. Usually, if you open up your tool settings for rotation or any of them, you'll see the uh, step snap. And right now, I have it turned off. So if I turn it on, absolutely, I can say every 15 degrees, I want you to snap. I turn it off, that should be disabled, and yet it still keeps going. Well, the hot key to jump in and out of a uh, step snap is to hold J. So um, I can hold J, and it actually frees it up, allows me to <laughs> reset it. So I don't know why, because like even when I hit J, it says it turns it on. And yet, it's allowing me to freely rotate. So it's a little bug. It doesn't always happen, but it seemed to be happening right now. So but I can reset that uh, pivot for any selection. And it's going to be really annoying because I have to hit J every time I want to do that. But now that allows me to... Um, That's weird. Relative object. Yeah. So just be aware, Maya sometimes doesn't behave. And you just have to roll with the punches. Let's do a couple of those uh, on this side as well. Some thickening. Okay. That feels pretty good. And F8, get out of that component mode. Let's just take a look at this in here. Very nice. So now I've got these two pieces, and I need to do some twisting and deforming of them so that we can get something as we see in the drawing like this. So to do that, I'm gonna first start by combining the two pieces of geometry. 
so that when I'm um, manipulating the vertices, they're manipulating together. So go to Mesh, and I'll combine them. Now they're a single piece of geometry. For now, I'm going to go ahead and delete the history. That will get rid of either extra transform nodes. And now that these are combined, I'm going to right click and grab vertice and be beware under your soft selection attributes for your move tool or any of your selection tools here. You have these fall off modes for volume and surface and global. If I do surface, you'll notice no matter how much I increase my soft select, it's not jumping the surface to the other one. So I'd have to shift select. But if I do volume, then it's just looking at all the geometry within that vicinity. You also have global or object, so we can start looking at other objects in your scene, uh, not just those that you've combined. Um, but I've combined these two to make sure. Um, so let's switch it back to volume. Turn down the uh, soft select. And now I can begin to do some manipulations. thinning. Take a look from the top. Not too bad. I might try and get some uh, rotation. So here I'm going to grab actually the outer ring, which is going to do the rotation based on my camera viewport. So from the angle I'm looking at this, it will just rotate it that way for me. Just a little bit of twist. And that looks pretty good. So now let's do a final little bit of modeling of just beveling the edges. So that will really make these uh, Pieces. I'm not going to bevel those bottom ones because they'll probably never be seen and I might be shortening them anyway. So go ahead and go to mesh bevel. And on my bevel, I'm going to take down the segments to one. And let's go ahead and decide how big of a fraction we need to do here. That probably feels good. Take some of these pieces over.
Well, the middle mouse moving there. I'm not actually just always picking, I just sometimes will just middle mouse. Cool, so now I've got some nice pieces, and you can kind of see how nice those, bringing out those uh, edges to give that slight uh, beveled, chiseled edge to that wood. It really does look quite nice. There you can start to see a little bit of like a twisting going around. my arrow keys to pick walk and I'm just middle mousing a lot of those pieces over there. No, that looks, feels pretty good. Let's see how that, when you come back and look at this one that just looks too uniform. And I'll go through here and just pick walk my way by using my arrow keys and I'm just middle mousing over. All right.